Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've had a couple weeks off recovering from a dental surgery and I'm feeling so much better. And I'm excited to share a new recipe with you today. This has been on my blog for a while, but sometimes those recipes get buried and I like to bring them back to your attention because uh, some of these older recipes are real classic and you'll you know your life will be enriched by making these um, we're going to make ume vinegar pickles sometimes i call them quick ume pickles because these are not the type of pickles that you have to ferment for uh, weeks or or months like maybe a sauerkraut or a kimchi this is something that can be made overnight so it's very exciting to learn how to make these and all you need are two ingredients plus water, so maybe three ingredients total. You need some kind of vegetable. I like to use uh, different kinds of radishes and onions. I especially like red onions and purple daikon. I also like uh, watermelon radishes and red radishes. You can use any of those. Those are the vegetables that work best for these pickles, but you can experiment with other things. Once in a while I use cucumbers I've used carrots, but I really do think radishes and onions, red onions in particular, work the best with the colors of the uh, ume vinegar and with the crispness and crunchiness of the vegetable. You're also going to need ume plum vinegar. There are different brands of this. Uh, this is the Eden brand that you can readily find at Whole Foods and uh, online, but you can also get the Motoku brand or the uh, Osawa brand. So uh, ume vinegar is special because it's a probiotic vinegar. It's not a true vinegar. It's actually a salt brine. And Ginger Snap wanted this. <laughs> he can play with that if he wants. <laughs> okay, so you can use this salt brine, quote unquote, vinegar as in, um, a way of fermenting the vegetable with salt. So it's very similar to making a dill pickle, but uh, it has a little bit more flavor. Uh, the ume vinegar has uh, a little bit of sweet, but mostly sour and salty. Uh, so now I'm just going to slice my vegetables. I wash these really well. And if there were any blemishes or bruises or dark spots, I would peel those off with a vegetable peeler. But these are so fresh. I got these from a farm that uh, called Steelbow Farm where we've been getting a CSA box, like a subscription. And they are so wonderful. They farm on the land in... Uh, Manor, east of Austin, that um, used to be Tecolote Farm. And you might know them from the farmer's market if you live in Austin. But anyway, you can find these usually at the farmer's market. Uh, in the winter, I've been able to find these at the grocery store at um, Wheatsville Central Market and Central Market. I mean, Wheatsville Central Market and Whole Foods from time to time. But, um, you know, check the farmer's market if you want to try to get these. And these turn out the most beautiful kind of fuchsia color. I'm going to show you in just a minute uh, the ones that I made last night with, or yesterday morning maybe, of watermelon radishes. I made them out of watermelon radishes. And those, uh, depending on how deep the color is when you cut them open uh, they are really beautiful too so i'll show you those in just a moment so i'm slicing these not paper thin because then you know the pickles don't have much structure to them they're real floppy i like to make these maybe like a, an eighth of an inch or slightly smaller than eighth of an inch. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but pretty thin, but not paper thin, even though we could do that. 
I like them just a little bit thicker because then you can slice them uh, and put them uh, on garnish uh, as a garnish for things like tacos and salads and you put them in sushi rolls. They really are perfect for so many dishes. And besides the fact that they taste really delicious, they also are really, really beautiful. And so I found that yesterday when I was making the pickles with watermelon radish, I had two radishes a little bit bigger than this one. So about this size. And I needed about a third cup of ume vinegar and it made um, maybe about three cups of pickles once it had kind of, once they had kind of shrunk in size a little bit. But I'll show you here in a minute what we can do about the amount of vinegar. So that might be enough for today. Nelson, would you mind getting the pickles I made yesterday? They're uh, in the refrigerator. Thanks. So what I'm gonna do is kind of separate these a little bit so that I can make sure that the vinegar is going to go on both sides of each round. And what's going to happen is, thank you. When I put the salt brine on here of the ume vinegar and water, moisture is going to come out of, water is going to come out of the radishes and kind of, what am I trying to say? It's going to make the brine even more. You know, it's, it's going to make it uh, greater in volume. It's going to increase the volume of the brine. So it's gonna seem like we need a lot more than this. I'm gonna do half and half uh, filtered water or spring water and ume vinegar. And I'm just gonna pour it over the top. I might need more, but I'm not sure. I have to kind of see. I might need a little bit more. So I usually toss this. You could toss this with tongs or with your hands. I'm using tongs. It's just a little bit harder to feel if they're separated. And what you're doing is just making sure that the vinegar coats each one. I think I'm going to need a little bit more. So let's see. Maybe I'll do a third cup and then. Oops, I think I actually did another half cup. I'll just use as much as I need and then. Save some for the red onion pickle. Okay, that's probably enough. So it's not quite covering it because as I said before, these are gonna shrink in size because moisture is gonna come out due to the salt. Oh. So I've got plenty. I've actually got extra brine in here. And I'm just going to put a plate over the top just to weigh it down just a tiny bit so nothing will float on the top. And I'm going to let this sit for several hours and then I'm going to put it in a mason jar with all the liquid. You might need more than one jar. Uh, but this will fit really nicely in your refrigerator. If you don't have one of these, you can use a glass uh, storage container, but these are super handy and they're very inexpensive. You can buy them at the grocery store. It's just a canning jar. You could also use a smaller size, but I like the quart size so nothing gets too crowded. I just pack them in there with the liquid and let it, um, you know, you can either do that now, but I usually like to have them in the bowl uh, 
and then I take them, put them in the jar when I'm ready to refrigerate them in about maybe two to three hours. It could sit out all day. That would be fine too. If you have to leave and then come back, just let it uh, sit in the brine. It's not going to go bad. Now I'd like to show you the ones I made with watermelon radishes yesterday. You would not have believed how beautiful they were inside. Now they're more uniform in color, but they were a little bit greenish on the outside and um, very bright pink on the inside. You can kind of see uh, from that one what they might have looked like before. But, you know, if you slice these and you want to put them on a taco or on top of uh, black beans and rice or something, I mean, they are just out of this world. And if you've known me for a while, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about these pickles, but if you've tasted them, you know what I'm talking about. I've never met anyone that didn't go crazy over these pickles when they tried them, so. This, this is just overnight that they uh, changed in color, became that kind of uniform color because the color from the vegetables actually goes into the brine and then kind of makes this really beautiful color for the pickles. Now I think I'll make a small batch of red onion pickle. I actually bought this onion to make quick ume pickles with a while back and luckily onions last a long time because it's still good. For some reason I didn't end up making it when I thought I would. So again, if you have some regular red radishes, those work really, really well too. They're smaller, so it takes a little bit more time to slice them, but that's really the biggest reason why I don't use them a lot for pickles. They are delicious and look beautiful and all of that. Um, make sure if there's any brown spots in your vegetables inside or outside that you remove those because that could kind of sabotage your pickle making. You don't want any um, impurities in there that could make it spoil. And I usually slice these in kind of a fajita um, type half moon. I'll show you here. Cut a little bit more of this off. Okay. I think I heard Izzy just get off of her call. She's home for school until January 11th or something. So I'm doing this fajita cut, kind of cutting along the ridges of this red onion. Hey, Izzy. Wanna say hi? Hello. <laughs> Do you wanna um, pour the vinegar over for me, Izzy? Come on over. So now I have an assistant because Izzy's done with her class until after lunch. Ooh, I see a dark spot there for some reason. There was a bad spot in these. It makes it harder. Yeah, there was a little bit of mold in there or something. Okay, almost done. Almost done. Okay, now really? 
<laughs> and you pour this over. So this is the half ume vinegar, half water. And pour that over. Okay. My hair just looks really weird because I have this headband on. So when I have my hoodie, good. when I have my hoodie on, it uh, doesn't. My hair isn't all frizzy. Because if I do it with my hair. I'm just you know, inspecting this to make sure it doesn't have any of those bad pieces. So I'll look in here and see if you see any black pieces. That looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit more of the vinegar and water combo. That might be too much. Okay. And we can show you with the onions actually what how you put it in the jar. So these could sit for a few hours in here, or you can you know, put them in the jar. And these will turn bright, bright pink, just like these radishes did, because the purple part of the onion is going to go into the brine. And it's just going to look really beautiful. I like to put these pickled onions on so many things. They'd be great on tacos, of course. Um, salads. What else have we used pickled red onions for? Uh, almost anything. And you can chop them into small pieces. I like to do that. And then just sprinkle them on top of things like enchiladas or um, fish. Yeah, I don't know. I just use them for so many things. And these pickles are better for you than vinegar-based pickles because they are pickled by uh, lactobacillus fermentation because they're fermented with salt. And uh, the ume vinegar is actually a probiotic vinegar condiment itself. And actually also just put them, chop them up and put them on top of some white sushi rice. Right. These go really well in grain salads or right on top of white sushi rice or in sushi roll. Yeah, we can put this right in. Okay. And so what you want to make sure to do is make sure that it is all covered Here, with the brine. Oh yeah, you could pour just a little bit more of that in. That's good. Yeah, just pour the rest. Okay. So, I hope you'll try making these and be on the lookout. We're going to be sending out some holiday gift ideas and promotions for different things that we're offering over the holidays, including online cooking classes, uh, let's see, my online courses, the Cooking Together Supper Club, we're going to have a special four-month subscription available for gifts, and uh, we'll let you know kind of what we've been doing in those different um, courses like the Cooking Together Supper Club so that you can get an idea of what it's all about. So be on the lookout for that on, on Facebook and in my newsletter and sign up for my newsletter if you have the chance. I'm going to be sending out a free holiday ebook that's brand new uh, that you'll want to make sure you get uh, in the next week or so. So all you have to do is go to cooklovehealcom or you can go to cooklovehealcom slash subscribe and I'll get you on the newsletter and the next one I send out is going to have that free ebook for the holidays. So I hope you enjoy uh, making your pickles. Let me know if you try these, uh, take a picture. You can share it um, below this video if you 
if you like. I'd love to see it. And we wish you, hey, come here. Oh, Ginger Snap's gonna come wish you. Oh, just hit his hand. Come here. Oh, I'm boy, boy. I'm we wish you happy holidays, and we'll be back here yeah. next Wednesday at noon. So we will see you mm -hmm. then. Oh, man. Bye. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just.